I'm an OJS core collaborator. Uh, in this talk, uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk about performance improvements in Node Core. Uh, I won't just list them. That sounds kind of boring to me. Um, I'll talk about how we benchmark. I'll talk about some of these PRs. Uh, I, um, I'm going to apologize. I will say some names, and I'll probably mispronounce them. So I'm sorry for these people uh, for mispronouncing their names. And I'm hopeful that some of you will maybe in the future also create uh, PRs in Node. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, start. Uh, performance has been important in Node.js since a long time, but I wouldn't say it was a core priority for the, for the team. Features, stuff like that, really a lot of things were more important, making more features, making more stuff. Uh, but there was a, a change in the last year or two, I think. And I think we all know what it was. Bun. Bun really started, uh, made a splash in uh, the JavaScript runtime world. Uh, they claim uh, to be very performant, right? They've got, this is on their website. Uh, five times faster server-side rendering, six times faster WebSocket, and four times faster SQLi. Uh, I know I'd, I'd switch in a moment. This is, this is, these are great numbers. They have a great, uh, I will say they have a great team. And it makes sense that a lot of people, after seeing these things, came to know it and said, you know, you're not performing enough. Please improve your performance. Uh, and just to be fair, as I said, we have competition, right? And to be fair, with, sorry, the clicker is uh, doing some problems. To be fair, most of these uh, comparisons are actually uh, pretty, pretty accurate, not, not these distances. Uh, and people, you know, they see, they give you the source code to a, to a benchmark. They give you, a, the, they give you, uh, they say they're much faster, and people believe it, believe it, and they do have a great team. But I will say that the comparisons always, aren't always uh, fair. Uh, for example, their WebSocket uh, benchmarks, they, um, uh, if you don't bond, they have new WebSockets uh, integrated inside of the system. But for some reason, when they benchmark against Node.js, they use WS instead of new WebSockets, which also works for Node.js. HTTP server, they test the built-in HTTP server instead of Fastify or, again, new WebSockets, which can also work on HTTP server. And I'll just show you a compilation of, of different benchmarks. I, I'm not going to talk about them by Daniel Amir that show that suddenly with new WebSockets, Node.js is faster, right? So benchmarks are whatever the person wants to sell you. For example, I'm part of the Node.js core collaborative team, so I'm going to tell you that Node is great. Maybe you shouldn't believe me. But what I'm going to say is uh, these are all, benchmarks are also a bit stale from October last, of last year. I didn't run them. These are from Daniel Amir's website. What I'm saying is you need to take benchmarks with who's, t who, who, who's selling them. So I, I really believe that it doesn't matter. What matters is that we've got pressure on the Node.js team to, to, to increase the performance, to be better. And this is good. This is good because we've seen this before. When Dino was created, there was a lot of pressure to add fetch, to add A to B, to add B to A, to add standards into, the, into, uh, into Node. And when Yarn was created, created, suddenly NPM team, you know, they needed performance, right? Before Yarn, everyone moved to Yarn, and then NPM added features because there, were press, there was pressure. And I believe that even though the benchmarks aren't always, uh, uh, aren't always fair, they create good pressure on the Node.js team to improve. And that's, the, that, that's a good thing. Great. So what Node.js did did was create the Node.js performance team. This is an image from the issue tracker. I took it a week or so ago. Uh, they've got a lot of issues on stuff that people can join, can try to work out, maybe improve. They've got bi-weekly uh, meeting, bi-weekly Zoom meetings, and you can also create uh, issues here yourself if you want to. Anyone can read it. Anyone can attempt to fix and improve them. Anyone can, can, can add. It's really great. I encourage you to go into it and try to, to, do, to fix stuff yourself. Uh, here's an example of one of these issues. This is a NodeFS. Uh, here, uh, uh, Yagiz, that's uh, Yagiz Nizipli. 
I hope, as I said, I'm not sure I'll pronounce all the names correctly. He can simply open this issue about performance issues in file system. He said, we uh, call uh, the file system many, many times instead of once. This, is, this causes an issue. This specific uh, issue, uh, uh, six different people, not all of them collaborators, created PRs. More than 15 PRs were created from this specific issue and more than 100% improvement in some cases. This is an image of all the, those PRs. This is, in my opinion, amazing. This is just from one issue in, the, in, the, in that, um, in, in that uh, issue tracker. So great, Let, let's talk a bit about how, how we do stuff. So you go, to, you go to your boss, you tell him, look, I've got this great improvement idea, and, and he tells you, okay, Sounds nice, leave it on the floor, I'll, I'll talk to you later. What do you need to do? You need to convince him, right, that, that, this, that this, is actually, uh, this is actually worth his time. So how do you do it? How do you convince your boss that this improvement is a good idea? Any ideas? Anyone? No, money is not a good, good, good thing? Any, uh, anyone else? How do you prove that you, that you improve your, 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 the code? Benchmarks, that's the correct answer. You need to show him benchmarks. And what do you do? You add benchmarks to all of your code, right? Here's a nice way to, to do it. You add performance now or date now, you wrap your code, and this is it, 20 minutes, you do it, you, you see, it works, it's great. Let's, 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 uh, let's, let's try it out. You have this test and it gets a function, right? You run uh, this function one million times, and you do n minus start, and you have your benchmark. Okay, let's see how this works out. You've got, let, let's benchmark arrow functions versus regular functions, okay? Any bets who's faster? Arrow functions, regular functions. I'll take a vote later. I ran this on my computer, and I got the arrow functions are way, way, way faster, right? A million times, just two and a half seconds versus regular functions. Obviously, regular functions are terrible. Okay, let's do the opposite. Let's test the regular function before, first, and then the arrow function later. Any bets on who's faster? Regular functions is the winner. <laughs> so obviously, we can see that, uh, that uh, benchmarking isn't that simple as adding a performance now. Uh, for the curious, the reason is V8 and JIT and other things, there's some caching. You need isolation. You need some stuff. You need, you need isolation. You need some stuff that will take care of the system for you so that, you, so that your benchmarks are actually um, accurate. I will say, I will say that performance now in general is not that bad. I use it all the time or date now. I use it all the time to, test be, to benchmark, but if you want really granular, granular support, you need a benchmarking tool. And the good thing is, oh sorry, I forgot this uh, image. And, and the good thing is that Node.js has a benchmark tool. Uh, there are hundreds of benchmarks. Uh, it runs on the Node.js CI. I've been told that it runs on dedicated machines, which is super important if you want uh, repeatable results. And you know, you don't have this VM. What does it do? It, it takes the master, it takes the unchanged version, it compiles both of them. It runs the benchmarks on both uh, versions of uh, Node. And it compares the runtime and does a statistical analysis. Why a statistical analysis? Because you want to avoid this. You want to avoid uh, the, the case that your code is, looks kind of similar and you want, it to, you, you want it to understand if there's real change in your code. So it has, how, th sometimes when you run a benchmark, this is how the results look like. You have this mean, you have, uh, you have some variance. I'm not going to talk about it a lot. I'm just going to say that the statistical test that it does is an independent two-group t-test. For those of you who have some statistical background, the null hypothesis is that there is no change. And later on, we'll, we'll, t we'll talk about it a bit more, but it's not really important. The important thing is the tool can tell you if, if your result is statistically significant. So how does a benchmark look like in uh, Node.js? There's this method called create benchmark. That's great. What does it do? It gets a method and your bench parameters. Um, right. So you have uh, your main, which I'll show later is uh, some function that you write, and these are the bench parameters. Uh, for example, this is a, a, a test that gets encoding, 
and n. So in total, you create six, uh, six uh, different benchmarks because it takes every pair. If you have three, it'll take every three, and so on. So this simple, uh, this simple definition creates six different benchmarks for you to test, which is great. It's very succinct, very, very, very good. And you've got your uh, function, your benchmark fun function. What does it do? You maybe have some setup code. This specific one doesn't have one, but you have some setup code and your bench start. You do your bench smart. It's kind of similar to, to the performance now, right? But it takes care of all the ugly stuff. And then you do your bench end and you get results. Also, before that, I want to say here's an example of a, of a nice benchmark. This is 80 benchmarks in one file because of all the parameters. This is written something like nine years ago. I want to say that. It's, Node.js always had benchmarking in mind, but it wasn't a priority. That's why I wanted to, to emphasize, as I said before. So this is amazing, in my opinion. 80 benchmarks in just one simple definition. There are more, there are larger ones. So let's look a, a bit uh, on the benchmarking results and try to understand them, because there's a st st statistical analysis. So on the left side here, you'll see a list of all of the benchmarks, every combination of parameters. Here's the confidence, three stars basically means that you've got 99.9% .9 that you actually change performance. Uh, two stars mean 99, one star means 95, and zero stars mean, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't see any change. Performance improvement is what you'd expect. It says if it's positive, it means you've improved performance. Obviously, you're great, uh, you're all great developers, so you never uh, uh, reduce performance. But some people like me, we suck, and we might have negative values. So for developers like me, we also have negative values, which say that you actually degrade your performance. You can your boss and say, well, you know, it's negative. It's not good. And accuracy, I'm not going to go into it too much. It's a relationship between the confidence and improvement. It basically says how much improvement you need uh, to get a level of confidence. I think it's more of a meta data for yourself to understand why you did or didn't get any stars. And if you're iterating, it gives you some idea of the variance of performance, how, how, mu how much, because sometimes performance can be, can have a lot of differences depending on the situation. So as I said, I showed you this benchmark, right? And it's obviously foolproof, right? Nothing can, 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 can cause issues. Obviously, it's not foolproof uh, for a multitude, multiple reasons. First of all, sometimes small changes creep in multiple PRs which has happened. Sometimes you just don't have benchmarks on the right thing. That can also happen. So you see the gradation just after a lot of, uh, a lot of the PRs. Here's an example. This happened. This happened between node 14 and node 15. Uh, there was a significant regression on master. I believe it was 20 or 25 percent. I believe it was, uh, and it was fixed between node 15 and node 16. But obviously, it wasn't catched during uh, the, the because there was like there were like five or six PRs on the HTTP stack during that time, and we saw uh, a lot of degradation. There are other things as well, but this was a nice example. It was fixed. So let's talk a bit about how the performance. Of, what, what what have you seen? So I'm warning you. A lot of benchmarks. We're going to see a few benchmarks. I will say it was longer, but I got complaints from people that I showed them this talk. So we'll see uh, a few. Uh, ADA. So ADA is a great, uh, is a new URL parser uh, by Yagiz Nizilpi, Miguel Taxiera, and Daniel Lemire. Uh, what it does, it uh, parses URLs. It's, it's actually quite uh, important for servers. Uh, it, what they did, they moved, a lot of, they moved a lot of code to C++ from JavaScript and reduced uh, data transfer between C++ and JavaScript. And these are the benchmark numbers. As you can see, numbers are between 95% to about 500. These are amazing numbers just from moving, uh, writing, they wrote a new library for URL parsing. Uh, and the most, and I'm gonna show you the most important benchmark of all. It's 82% faster than BUN. <laughs> There's yeah, so that's the last time I'm going to talk about BUN. I just saw that a benchmark when I was researching for this, this specific talk, and I thought that people should know that, that they lost. So, yeah. 
So moving on, errors. Most of you, again, never see errors on your code. Every, uh, no, never. But again, me mediocre, uh, mediocre uh, programmers like me I, uh, see a lot of issues. And this specific, uh, specific issue, I'd like to read this out loud, uh, uh, if I may, uh, because I really like this language of this PR, and I'll read it out loud. I don't know why capture large stack traces stack trace exists. Maybe my approach is wrong. I don't know if I lack some node specific knowledge, blah, blah, blah. The test basically passes locally, except one test. Maybe I messed something up. I hope I didn't. Right? This is what they, it says. What I'm trying to show is sometimes you just need, uh, you're not sure, but you see something weird in the code. And you say, I can fix it. I'm not sure. It's for, you know, this, was his, this was his third PR in total and known. I really like this. Very humble, very modest. And ex very nice numbers. In some of the benchmarks, 100%, uh, 102%, and 1,500 percent improvement. That's amazing. Really, really nice stuff. Uh, sorry. Really nice stuff uh, that was done. Let's move on. Uh, sim UDF. This uh, moved uh, UDF parsing to use sim using the uh, operations. Uh, this validates and uh, transcodes UDF. Again, you can see very nice numbers, a bit of a regression on, on some of these, but the hu huge numbers on all of them, 140%, 200, that, that's amazing. Really amazing work. Remember that PR that I said earlier about the issue about the FES? This is a list of all of those uh, file system improvements. I'm not going to show them. And here's a nice uh, PR by uh, Razle Luvatan, who's somewhere there, I think. Uh, Again, I like it. I like what he said. Hey, you know, from my local test, if this improves it by two or three times, can someone please benchmark it? Because he wasn't a core member then, so he had needed someone to run his benchmarks for him. As you can see, very nice improvements for street, for web street, for uh, web streams. Web streams are very important for a fetch. Uh, as you can see, numbers uh, between 85 and 145 percent. Uh, stream, which is different than web streams. I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> Uh, again, nice numbers, 81% uh, uh, to 233. Um, B2A, who, who is B2A? This is relatively new in Node. If you didn't know, this is an ancient, but relatively new in Node. It was, uh, there was an issue at performance basically from day one. This new uh, PR increased uh, by between 300% uh, and uh, 1,000. And you know, if you talk about B2A, uh, you have to talk about A to B, right? And A to B had uh, up to 2,500% improvement. Uh, great. I'll talk about a few more things. IOU ring, for those who care, it, on Linux, eight, X, eight times throughput. It's still behind a flag. That's why I put it in a more important place. Buffer comparisons, IP validation, uh, spawn execute on, on Linux, URL search parameters. Really, a lot, a lot, a lot of things were improved. And again, this is amazing for all, from all of these collaborators. Um, these changes affect the whole uh, Node.js stack. Uh, servers, I mean, I talked about stream, I talked about buffers, I talked about web streams, I talked about FS. Of course, all these changes affect everything in, in Node. I'm not going to show uh, benchmarks because I think I've shown enough. But I will say, uh, for example, you can see that, uh, I'll read this out loud. After more than two years, I'm happy to confirm that we've achieved performance parity with node fetch. This is from, April, from late April. So what I'm saying, a lot of work has been done, and really performance improvement has been uh, th uh, th through the whole node stack. Okay, I'd like to talk a bit about how these performance, how these performance improvements look like. So you know, uh, you've got, uh, uh, someone, maybe someone would say that every change is unique. I believe that a lot of these things have fundamental, a lot of fundamentally similar things, a lot of fundamentally similar changes. This, for example, is a PR that changed uh, when you write file in, with promises in Node.js, it writes in chunks, and then it doesn't write everything uh, in one go, it writes in chunks. And the, the, there existed, uh, uh, if you recall, Node.js is 15 years old. So some stuff just is there and nobody knows about it. So you need to fix it because you need to fix stale stuff. And this PR specifically changed uh, the writing chunk from 16, 16 uh, kilobytes to 500 kilobytes. This is the whole PR, one line. And the improvement, performance improvement was between 70 to 120%. This is the whole PR, one line. Uh, there are also some tests added, but, 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 but for this, uh, just one line. 
And what I want to say is sometimes you need to think about your code and re review it when something changes. Maybe there's a new feature in the language. Maybe there's a new, you know, some concepts. You know, sometimes uh, 10 years ago it was, I don't know, 1 gigabyte memory RAM or whatever, 8 gigabytes. Now you got 16 or 32. You, you, you can increase your constants. Uh, lately there was a high watermark change uh, with a similar effect. Um, what I want to say is sometimes you just need to go and look at your old code and say, I'm using reflect construct. I can use new. Uh, I'm using some uh, primordials for those who, who know it. Uh, uh, stop using it, improve it using built in stuff that maybe didn't exist when you wrote it initially if, uh, if your code is relatively uh, old. Uh, another thing is moving to C++. Um, this is a PR uh, by Oliver uh, Medhurst. He just moved a lot of code from JavaScript to C++, removed uh, many, many interactions of data, data transfer between uh, C++ and JavaScript, uh, and he got uh, between 6%, which is on the low end, and on large files, 85% just for write file. That's amazing. Uh, that, that, that's really amazing. Um, there was also a similar, uh, similar PR for a read file, which got uh, about 75%. Uh, and again, again this, this is another trick that, uh, uh, that Node.js can do, moving stuff from JavaScript land to C++ land. Some collaborators would say that, that, uh, that you can do fast JavaScript. Uh, history has shown us that C++ is, some, is sometimes better. Okay. Um, uh, let's move on to uh, reducing allocations. A lot of times, uh, especially on servers, you allocate a lot, a lot, really many objects. Uh, many objects are uh, are um, are small, but when you have a lot of connections, a lot of stuff, you suddenly have uh, a lot of things to do. For example, writable streams have 30 billion properties. Readable streams have 27 billion properties. So maybe you don't know, but boolean memory usage is extremely high. Every boolean can take up to four bytes. One boolean. So, uh, do you have any ideas on how to uh, make a boolean smaller? Yes, so uh, bit operations is the correct answer. You need to use bits. So I'll give a small introduction to those of you who don't know and I'm refresh to those who do. We can set the third bit, let's, let's say we have x and x is, I'll just say numbers take uh, eight, uh, eight bytes. So Obviously, once you have two booleans, you might, you might prefer a uh, number. Please don't do this at home. Uh, so you set the third bit in x to two, to true, and you get, this is how you do it. You do x and bitwise or, and the third bit becomes uh, one. Or you can do the, with an and and a zero in the third bit, and then x is the same, except it has uh, a zero on the third bit. This is an example uh, of how you convert uh, a boolean into a bit. Uh, how do you convert a bit to a boolean? You want the third bit. So you take it out, you do an and with 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And if it's 0, it means that it was uh, 0, uh, false. And if, it was, uh, and if it's non-zero, it means it was true. Uh, that's the basic thing that you need to understand on how doing bits. So you just need, you need some code to manage which bit corresponds to which boolean. There's some uh, management that needs to go around on how to do it. I'm not going to show it because it's a bit messy, but that, this is the core idea. You need to compact your memory management. Uh, here's a PR by Benjamin Greenbaum, who was the first PR in Node.js that added this horrendous feature. And as you can see, creation was uh, increased by between 4% to 15%. These are really nice numbers for just moving Booleans to bits. And what I really liked is a 40% memory reduction in the stream, in readable streams, uh, which was amazing. Uh, uh, someone could calculate how it was originally. I forgot I didn't write, but somewhere around uh, 300 bytes. We moved it. Uh, he moved it. And I, these numbers are great. So obviously, if we did it on readables, right? Lazlo uh, Votan, again, sorry if I pronounced pronouncing your name, uh, did it for uh, writables. And we got, uh, basically, again, major improvements between some, uh, I believe it's an anomaly on readables, but mostly between uh, 10 to 
improvement and a reduction of writable instances, uh, again, by about 40%. And when you have a server, you've got a lot of streams, right? You've got a lot of HTTP going on. This is really, really th this syntax performance. So you're saying, oh, I signed it on stock. I'm going to move everything to bitmasks. And I'm telling you, please don't. This is, I searched Google, and this is the first uh, blog post that I found about this method. A very esoteric and impractical way of managing booleans, okay? And I kind of agree with this. I, I, I'd like to say a few words on, on uh, balancing performance and uh, readability. I believe that the uh, runtime should prefer performance over readability because basically everyone is using your runtime and you need good performance. When you're writing an app, performance is important. It is important, but readability and maintainability is also important, and you need uh, the runtime to give you that performance instead of doing esoteric thing and anti-JavaScript thing like bitwise operations and bit masks and stuff like that. So I will say if you're running a library, my, I'd say depending on how low end you need to do ugly tricks or not. Um, uh, but uh, again, just use, uh, do, uh, use your common sense when writing stuff. This is what I just want to give an example of some of the nice and maybe special things that, that we do in uh, Node Core. So I actually went a bit faster than what I thought. So basically, I, I'll say tons of work has been done to improve performance in Node Core. I just mentioned a few PRs. I had like a, at least double more, but my commentators told me that, it, that everyone will fall asleep, so I left them out. More work still to be done. Uh, we're always looking for more collaborators. Uh, as you've seen, some people just say, ah, this is something I wrote down and it looks nice. Uh, please merge it. And they got amazing results. And I believe that any one of you can go into the issue tracker either in Node or in uh, Node Performance and uh, improve the code or open an issue. Complain. You see something wrong. You see something slow. It doesn't work like, you're, like it's supposed to. Don't, say, don't think that it's supposed to be that way. Open an issue. Look in the code. Uh, we're always happy to see performance issues. People are happy to help. Now there's competition. So, there, so there's also incentive right, for people uh, to actually fix the code because they don't want to see uh, six times faster than now. That's insulting. I, th uh, you know, I want some respect to my work. So uh, thank you very much. And I hope... Uh, you, I showed some uh, stuff from the Node uh, core. Thank you very much.